Wie geht es Ihnen, wenn ich fragen darf? Guten Morgen, guten Tag oder guten Abend. Heute ich habe ich ein neuer Vielfeder, heißt Pelikan M20 und 100. Good morning, good afternoon or good evening, whatever time it is that you're joining me for this video. Thank you once again for clicking on the Penboy Roy Fountain Pen Review channel. Last night I saw a movie with my wife. It was called Mayhem. It was a movie with Steven Yun. He is one of the dudes on The Walking Dead. Good movie. I have to ask you guys regarding this movie, without giving away any spoilers, at the end, a fountain pen is used. Now, this fountain pen of unknown origin, make, model, or whatnot, hard starts the bejesus out of it. But I'm curious to know if you've guys seen this movie or you plan on seeing this movie, what the hell make or model is this pen? I want to know. Watch the movie if you so desire. If not, okay. But if you do see this pen, let me know in the comments what pen you think it is. The subject of today's video is going to be this pen here. This is the Pelican M100 Iconic Blue. <laughs> Now before I get into the neutral zone, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and high noon on this pen, I want to go over some background information. Let's start with the date of 1838. A chemist by the name of Herr Karl Honemann made his own color and ink factory in Hanover. April 28th, 1838 is the recognized date of the inception of the Pelican brand. In 1871, a gentleman, Gunther Wagner, he was the plant manager and the company chemist in 1963, made his family emblem into the company's logo. That family emblem is Pelican. Pelican in English. Moving forward into 1881, a man named Herr Fritz Beindorf was hired. His job, visit customers in Austria, Russia, and Italy. 1901, the 4001 Inc. series was introduced. 1906, the company bought property in a place called Podbilski Streise, which is now a historical site in Hanover, Germany. Don't mess with in the year 1929, Fülfederhalter heißt Pelikan, war geboren. The Pelican fountain pen was born. 1938, the 100 N was released. In 1950, the M400 was released. In 1973, production was moved to Pina slash Vorum. It is still there today. In 2003, the offices of Pelican were moved to Fertstrasse. It was this year that the Pelican logo and emblem was also altered and modified as well. In 2018, this guy got his hands on a Pelican M120 Iconic Blue Special Edition and is making a review for you guys. I hope you enjoy it. That's all I got for the background information. Moving on to the neutral zone. That which is neither good or bad, or could be good or bad depending on you. Let me start with the nib as I usually like to do. The nib is a proprietary steel nib. It is gold plated. It is part of an unscrewable nib unit. It has its own Pelican proprietary feed. This pen is a super light pen. That could be good for some, it could be bad for some, or some could just not care. It's like a helium blue next to a Goodyear blimp. Smurfs pick this up and wonder what's going on with this pen. This pen is bullet shaped slash cigar shaped and it maintains its original design from the 50s. The ends on both the top finial and the bottom finial where the blind cap is are both rounded, similar to the tip of a full metal jacket bullet, not so much a hollow point. Hollow points have hollow points, so. This pen is equipped with a piston filler. I clock this pen at holding 1.5 milliliters of ink. The pen has a rather large ink window. This clip is tension fixed. You should also know that the finial is removable. Once you remove the finial, what you have inside is an inner sleeve that's transparent, and that is what the finial screws onto. Once you remove the finial, the clip can come off and the internal sleeve is detached. That could be good and bad, or it can be good or bad, and I'll explain later why I say this. The center band is rather thin, and it only says two things on it. It says Pelican, and it says Germany. Now here's one that could be bad, or it could be negligible. But you should know that this entire pen is injection molded. Meaning, what they do is they take a whole bunch of beaded plastic, they put it into a tray, shove tray into a machine, machine melts plastic, squirts it into mold, mold pops out, you got your pen. This is not cast acrylic, as in they take a block of acrylic, they put it into a chuck, they spin it and they smooth it out until it's a nice pen shape and then they polish it until it's really nice and shiny and it has all depths of colors. Not so, this is injection molded. That's all I got for the neutral zone. Moving on to the good, the bad and the ugly, starting with the good. Things about this pen that are good. When it comes to the good, I think the first thing that I need to talk about is always the nib. When I first opened up the package and pulled this pen out of the box, it was so light and it seemed so not worth the amount of money until I wrote with it. Once I wrote with it, I was baffled by how good it wrote. 
This pen has a stainless steel nib that's proprietary to Pelican. What I find very interesting about this pen is, despite it being made of steel, it is very flexible for a steel nib. Now, make note, no one has ever advertised this pen as a flexible nib. But throughout my experience with this pen, what I find is that the nib is not only very well adjusted and finely tuned, it offers line variation that is on par with a Pilot Falcon soft fine nib. It's also on par with the line variation that you've seen in the word gauge made by Conklin. The line variation that this pen offers is astounding especially for a steel nib pen. What I also find is that the feed does not have a problem supporting the amount of ink that it requires to achieve this line variation. Now, being that this pen is not advertised or marketed or designed to be a flex nib pen, I wouldn't suggest using this as a mainstay or main source of your flexing and line variationing on a regular day, but just know that every once in a while, if you wanted to do it, it will do it for you and it snaps back rather quickly. I find that to be a very pleasant surprise. Other good aspects about this pen include just the overall design and the quality control with the exception of one thing and I'll get into that later. The piston mechanism is smooth. In addition, I mentioned before that the ink capacity is 1.5 millimeters. This is a sufficient and very good amount of ink to have inside a pen this size. What I also want to talk about is the balance. This pen is very light and as it is very light, it was designed to be posted or unposted. Now, whichever way you cut it, whether you decide to post and write or unpost and write, since the pen is so light, it doesn't affect balance at all. The overall length unposted is comfortable enough to write and the overall length posted is also comfortable because it doesn't backweight the pen in any way shape or form. I like the classical look that it has. The first one that was made was actually a black and green pen. I do like the tradition that it oozes. I especially enjoy that they kept the design the same giving me a little bit of a time travel back into when it first came out. The clip, your standard pelican clip, you gotta love that. It's a very unassuming shape, but I find that it makes for a very good everyday rider. It's durable despite how light it is. That's all I got for the good. Moving on to the bad, let's talk coin. The MSRP of this pen is $235. Now you can buy this pen at retailers throughout the United States online for approximately $188. At Goldspot Pens, they offer it at $187.95. That seems to be the average price with the retailers throughout the United States. I have to ask, what is up with the German pen makers that overcharge on injection molded fountain pens? Let me give you an example. The Mont Blanc 149 or the Mont Blanc 146. Both injection molded fountain pens. Today, if you want to buy a Mont Blanc 146, it'll cost you $705. If you want to buy one with platinum trim, it costs more. If you want to buy a 149, it costs over $900. Those are injection molded pens that they're hitting you over the head for. That kind of, to me, is an issue. It's injection molded. They can spit a thousand of those out a day if they wanted to. Coming back to the Pelican M120. It's injection molded and it doesn't give you a gold nib. Japanese injection molded pens run about this much, but at least they give you a nib that's made of gold. If the resin were cast acrylic, then I could turn around and say, you know what? Okay, it's worth it. Maybe it's justified. But for injection molding with a stainless steel nib, it seems like a whack over the head. It feels like someone just clocked me over the head with a phone book. What justifies the cost of $187.95? Sure, it has a piston filler. When it comes to the materials used in it, not much. The reasoning behind the costs of this pen is simply it says special edition and they've made it into a blue color. But not just any blue, iconic blue. That's all I got for the bad. Moving on to the ugly. Those are elements about the pen that should not be, but are. Now, when it comes to quality control on this pen, and when it comes to the ugly, there is really not much to say about this. The only thing that I can say is when I looked at my clip and how it was lined up with Pelican, it was not centered. The clip beak was just after the end on the Pelican, and that offset the Germany on the other side of the center band to be not directly behind the clip. Now, that seems anally retentive and nitpicky, but guess what? That's what I am. Not that big of a deal, particularly since I can unscrew the finial and realign it and then retighten it. But I shouldn't have to, and neither should you. That's something that they should catch and they should send out perfectly, especially if they want you to pay $187.95 for a pen that was injection molded with a steel nib. Now that's all I got for the ugly. It's high noon, decision making time. Should you or should you not pull the trigger on the Pelican M120 Iconic Blue? Despite how harsh I was about the cost of the pen and the ugly aspect about it and the fact that it's injection molded, it does make for a very good everyday writer. I love how this pen writes. This pen, 
after receiving it, has subsequently been one of my favorite writers and the pen that I've been using to write for the last week or so. I've used it every day. No hard starts, no baby's bottom, no skipping, no ink starvation issues, nada. It wrote very well. This one's an extra fine. I love it. For $187.95, although that is a big pill to swallow for an injection molded pen, I would have to say, yes, pull the trigger on this pen if you like the design, if you like the color of the blue, if you like the piston filling mechanism, if you like light pens. I do enjoy the fact that it's a solid color and not black and green like the original one. I like that it's blue. It has a very royal looking blue to it. Now I'm not saying royal blue, I'm saying it has a very royal quality to the blue. It looks very rich, but in your hand it's so light that it almost feels cheap. However, its durability and its quality control and the way it writes is not compensatory to how it feels based on weight. This pen writes. This pen showed up to play and it played all day long. Great writer. I love it. You have to love the look, the design, the vintage look to it, the color. You have to love every aspect about it to justify pulling the trigger on this pen instead of, say, a Pelican M200 with a steel nib or another brand of pen that has a piston filler like a Twisby that is significantly cheaper. If you're a collector, you'll definitely like it. If you're a collector and user, you'll definitely like it. So that was my review on the Pelican M120 Iconic Blue. I hope you found this helpful. I purchased this pen at Goldspot Pens at a significant discount for a fair, unbiased, and honest review. Aspects about reviews that I feel is important and I dedicate myself to at all times. Don't forget about the Penboy Roy Fountain Pen Review Channel discount code. How it works is you email me at penboyroygmail.com. I will email you back a code. That code is exclusive to you, and these codes are exclusive only to Penboy Roy Fountain Pen Review Channel subscribers. What you do is you call up Gold Spot Pens, you dial 207 pound, and then you speak to a nice lady named Dawn Johnson. She is the only person at Gold Spot that will coordinate this discount for you, and she is the only person that will give you a discount that is not offered to the general public and is only offered to Penboy Roy Fountain Pen Review Channel subscribers. So take advantage of it. This is my way of saying thank you to you guys for your support and supporting me in my endeavor to make fountain pen reviews and fountain pen reviews that are fun and entertaining. Thanks again for joining in. Be well, be safe.